Welcome to Workshop George. We're back on the Brooks Steam Car project today. We're going to be having a go at getting the engine running on compressed air. First off, if we're going to run the engine, or try running the engine, we need to get the wheels off the ground. Um, we'll quickly do that, and I'll be back with you. In our efforts to see if this engine will run, we need to put some air on somewhere. Um, we're going to do it through this valve and fitting, which is fitted by a previous owner. Actually, speaking of previous owners, um, I'm going to give a mention to Steve Theobald, who kindly allowed me to acquire these cars from him. The cars were owned by his dad, uh, Jeff Theobald, who knew a thing or two about these, and uh, I think he was the one that got the cars over here from. Uh, Canada or America, wherever they came from in the first place. Um, so, thanks Steve. Uh, right, let's get some air on there. Let's see what happens. We just, we'll put it on gently, because I don't know what's going to happen. There could be air pouring out of any, well there's air coming from somewhere. I don't know whether you'll be able to hear that, but I can hear air coming from somewhere. Doesn't sound much. It actually sounds like it's coming from the realms of the boiler somewhere. Well, when it came to editing this video, I discovered that the camera I thought was a good idea to only record the audio and not bother filming the video on this bit. So I'm redoing it and I'm pretty sure it's not going to be as good as it was the first time. But hey, we'll carry on anyway with where we were which is working out where the air is coming from. So it sounds like it's coming from there somewhere, so that's where we're going to work. And indeed, I can hear that in there. It actually doesn't sound that much. All I can hear is, it doesn't sound much. So I'm not going to let a leak bother us. We'll just try it and see. There's a little bit of pressure showing on the gauge, so we'll just try it anyway. Ooh, something happened there. Didn't sound like much. Right, what are we going to do now? Um, See if we can get more pressure, a bit more pressure on the gauge and see if that doesn't maybe that leak is worse than it sounds. So we'll just let it see if we can get the gauge out of it. Which it is doing actually. We'll just let that boost up for a bit. A bit too while we're waiting. In spite of the leaking air, we've got about 75 on the gauge now, so we'll give it another shot. And that sounds woohoo! It's running! Well, I didn't expect that at all. I thought we'd be struggling there for a bit. Well, excuse me, some air, that is going down really quickly. Just admire it for a minute. We're going to have a look in the top of the boiler to where we were earlier. This is this is the top of the boiler, the top boiler plate there. There's about 600 and odd tubes there, all in. 
um, if the boiler was uh, running, the burner would be underneath and we'd be getting pretty warm up here, I think. This is the main uh, outfeed, steam outfeed from the boiler coming out of the top, runs along this pipe through the boiler to the outside. This is a regulator. The regulator is connected to a control in the cab of the car, which we'll look at in a second. So the steam comes comes through through the regulator down here into underneath the boiler, which we'll quickly go and look at um, when it's under. Oh, let's put some light on. Not lighting up very much. Underneath the boiler there. That's where what we just said come in. The steam from the outside. The steam from the outside comes in here into this arrangement, which I think you describe as a superheater. So it's superheating the steam, drying it out of it in preparation, heading up to the back of the car, out through there to the engine. Again, we can see the air under the air, air coming out from somewhere. I can feel it as well. So one of those, one or more of those tubes, I'm guessing, is rotted through and letting the air, letting the air escape from there. Once the steam's been through the superheater, it comes to the back of the car, here, following round, to this which goes into the valve chest or what I describe as a valve chest allowing the steam into the cylinders once the steam's been used come back out through here through the exhaust back off up to the front of the car to the condenser which is where the radiator would be on a on a internal combustion engine car if we operate the regulator and let the engine turn over as we look in there, the two small rods you see there are operating the valves. Um, without looking at it, I would say there's eccentrics in there on the crankshaft operating those. As we look there, that's the piston rod to one of the cylinders, or from one of the cylinders, over the other side. I think you can see the other one moving backwards and forwards there also. I think we might have said before this linkage oh, it's only just about running now uh, this linkage uh, is what comes from the pedal in the front of the car controlling the valves which allows the car to go backwards back in the cab of the car this control you can probably just hear the engine running in the background is connected to that regulator in the on the boiler in there that we just looked at. We look at the floor. This pedal is connected to the valve gear on the engine and it's a reversing pedal as far as I can make out. If you press it hard enough, the engine runs in reverse. I don't know whether we'll see it from there. So it's going backwards there, get it off, and it's going forward. If you can just see through the gap there, the wheel, Again, backwards. This other small round bit in that pedal, that's something else, I don't know what it does. It looks like there's some sort of latching mechanism on the valve levers at the back. So it's got something to do with that, but we haven't worked that out, or I haven't worked that out yet. We'll have to see, that's for further investigation. Well, we've seen the engine running. And I'm not entirely sure where to go with that next, but I do know I don't want this car stripped into a thousand pieces. I'm trying to keep it together as much as I can while we're doing some sort of recommissioning with it. So I think something that will be done is one of the, en the other engine axle assemblies that I have, I'll refurbish that and swap the whole unit over with this one. Because although this is running, I don't know if I want to go out and try and try and run that like it is, I'd sooner refurbish the other one and put it in here. Um, 
another significant job that I think I'll do soon is to strip the boiler out of this car. I can't see any way that it's serviceable for our purposes. So uh, I'll be stripping that out before long and obviously you'll get to see that as well. In part three of the Brooks restoration, I'm going to have a go at refurbishing this water pump. Well, that was good to see that going. Uh, a lot easier than I expected to get that running. I hardly have to do anything. Uh, anyway, if you found that as enjoyable and interesting as I did, please think about subscribing. It'll help keep the channel going. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll leave it on the running engine for a bit.